Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and this short video we are going to discuss the most important updates that took place during the previous 12 hours, during the previous night at the local time. First we are going to start with Kherson area, we are going to talk about the settlement by the name of Kazachi Lagiri and the settlement by the name of Krynki. As we discussed yesterday, the Ukrainians um, uh, landed uh, their infantry on the Russian bank of the Dnieper river, the Russians managed to counter attack and according to the Russian sources as a result of counter offensive operation, the Russians managed to capture uh, some number of Ukrainian forces and to force the Ukrainians to step back from this bank of the river. When talking about the Ukrainians, we haven't received nothing, so probably we can use the Russian piece of information. Furthermore, today we got another update, the photo update of this area. Uh, these red squares show us the areas of fires in this area. So basically, according to this picture, we understand that where exactly the Ukrainians were landing. Uh, the Ukrainians landed yesterday in this area. After they landed, they start movements along the road in direction of Kazachi Lopony, and probably they managed to enter the settlement. And according to some sources, the Ukrainians captured the eastern edge of this uh, settlement in the street of Michurina Street. Also, in this video, we see another red dot. Probably that was the position of Russian reserves, Russian operational squads, platoons. That uh, main purpose was to, let's say, to repel attacks or to be just reserves. And as I understand, the Ukrainians attacked and bombed those positions, and the Russians were forced to step back. After the Russians sent reserves and forced the Ukrainians to step back on uh, in direction of islands or even further in direction of uh, Ukrainian bank of the river. So for now, we still haven't received 100% reliable information that the Russians managed to restore entire control over this area. So let's wait a little bit. Now we are moving to the most interesting areas of the front line to, Vier um, to the Vremivka tactical bridgehead and Bradley Square. And uh, this night we got a lot of very interesting updates from this area. First of all, according to some Russian military experts, the Ukrainians, uh, as a result of a local counter-offensive operation that took place on the north of Robotina, managed to enter Robotina itself. So this is the first evidence, the first uh, like piece of information, according to the Ukrainians managed to penetrate the Russians' defense belt and using a very fast attack enter the northern part of the settlement. The Russians managed to regroup and to send some reserves and as a result of counter-attack the Ukrainians were forced to step back. But anyway, this is something like... Um, that was a very interesting update because today the Russians continue reporting that the Ukrainians have uh, um, completed regrouping and have already launched uh, another wave of attack in the direction of Robotina. So basically that uh, thing that the Ukrainians managed to enter probably was for them as a piece of meat for a dog as a piece as a blood for a vampire i don't know so they feel the taste of of success feel, felt the taste of some progress and currently the ukrainians are sending endless waves of infantry in the direction of robotina so probably today there are going to be more updates and more fierce battles in the vicinity of this settlement furthermore the ukrainians published the video on how they managed to discover and to destroy the russian armored vehicle and supply vehicle that were heading in the direction of robotina as a result of probably artillery strike that armored vehicle was destroyed. Another interesting area is Vremevka tactical bridgehead because we also got a lot of very interesting updates from this settlement. Yesterday the Russian sources published the photo of the situation in this area, the Russians reported that the Ukrainians managed to enter the northern part of Robotina, of Urajaina, my bad, which was already reduced to ruins. And as a result of uh, fierce fightings in this area, the Ukrainians managed to capture some strongholds, some trenches in this settlement, uh, some edge positions, and so on. The Russians reported that they managed to repel the Ukrainian attack and to force them to step back, but we haven't received any photo or a video evidence of that. So basically, we will use these uh, like geolocations showing that the northern part of Urajaina is already under Ukrainian control. We haven't received um, any updates about any attempt from the Ukrainian side to attack from Staromayorska because if the Ukrainians want to complete the battle of Urajaina to attack from the north is not the only thing they need to do first of all and the second one the secondary direction should be from Staromayorska in direction of the southern part and to 
attack the south of Urajaina, but yet we haven't received nothing about this, so let's wait. Anyway, this morning the Russian sources also reported that Ukrainians accumulated a significant number of infantry on the northern part of Urajaina. The Russians have already started bombing and shelling the forest lines on the north of Urajaina using the uh, TOS flamethrower systems. As a result of those attacks, a lot of Ukrainian soldiers and infantry were destroyed in the forest lines. Now the Ukrainians, but anyway, uh, th that was not enough. Uh, the Ukrainians still have a lot of reserves and today we also are going to see very bloody clashes for Urajaina. And probably there is a very high chances that the Russians will be forced to step back a little bit further to the south in the southern area of Urajaina. Now we are moving further and we are going to talk about Abakhmut Artemovsk Klishevka, about this territory. Uh, after unsuccessful Ukrainian attempt to attack on the northern part of uh, Artemovsk, uh, the Russians launched a counter-offensive operation and basically the Russians forced the Ukrainians to step back very far from the water, Berkhovka water reserve, and currently the closest Ukrainian positions are located somewhere on the southeast of Bogdanovka. The Russians published a very big video how they were clearing and uh, how they were trying to implement clearing operation in this area. So basically the Russians have already cleared this area and before the next video probably we are not going to see get more updates. We'll update this territory at least as a gray zone. Uh, when talking about the southern area, uh, they were, we haven't received nothing, neither from Klishevka area, neither from Andreevka, after failed attempt of Ukrainian forces to attack in this direction during the previous two days. The Ukrainians currently need a small operational post to restore, to regroup, to evacuate wounded soldiers and to get fresh forces. The Russians published the video how they were trying to bomb and destroy the left Ukrainian position. So the uh, Ukrainians were defeated, but they, uh, kept, they were trying to keep some forces on the edge position and the Russians were hunting the Ukrainians with drones, with artillery systems, and basically were attacking them during all over the combat line along from Klishevka to Andreevka. The Ukrainians from their side published the video how they were hunting the Russian reserves and, and the Russian supply machines that were heading in the direction of the combat line. On this video we see how the Ukrainians attacked the Russian T-72, T-80 tank, and as a result of that, that uh, strike by drone, according to the author of this video, that tank was destroyed. Now we are moving further probably to the uh, most interesting part of the front line, to the Kupinsk area. And the thing is that um, when talking about the situation on the ground, the Russians are saying that they continue advancing and developing their positions from the line between Liman Pirve to Arlyanka to Ivanovka. Uh, to Yahidne, but uh, when talking about the situation in the in the vicinity of Kislovka Katlarovka uh, fortification stronghold, with Russians haven't provided us any uh, updates regarding their uh, previous offensive operation in the direction of uh, Ivanovka. The only thing, the only update we got is update from the was the update from the Ukrainian side. We got the uh, in, um, update that Ukrainian general Sirsky visited Kupinsk. Who is Sirsky? I'll remind you that this person is responsible, was responsible for defense operation of Artemovsk. Currently, he's responsible for offensive operation in Artemovsk as well. He is the head of infantry army of Ukraine, something like this. Yesterday, he visited Kupinsk, and uh, so that means that this is very important region for the Ukrainian. Uh, the Ukrainians understand and realize the difficult situation and within the next few days we are going to see increase of intensifying clashes from both sides, either from the Russians and from the Ukrainians. From Ukrainian side they have completed the regrouping of their forces, they have moved more infantry like 105th Brigade, 101st Brigade, 3rd Tank Brigade were redeployed in this area. The Ukrainians have removed 92nd Mechanized Brigade from this bridgehead and the Ukrainians have moved the forces 92nd Second Mechanized Brigade was redeployed in the direction of Chuguev. The Russian experts were saying that 92nd Mechanized was redeployed in the direction of um, Kherson area, but after that uh, update we haven't received any evidence, and now the Western deployment map have re removed 92nd Brigade in the direction of Chuguev, probably for regrouping, because that brigade was pretty damaged during the battle of Kupensk and Liman front lines. And also another interesting update about the regrouping is that the brigade of uh, is that 58 uh, motorized brigade from Artemovsk front line was removed in direction of Sumy. 
and the Russian sources have already confirmed that Ukrainians have accumulated significant number of forces along Sumy and Kharkiv area, and one of the most experienced well-trained Brigade 58's old, let's veteran 858's brigade was redeployed in this area, and the Russian experts confirmed that probably uh, within the next few months, weeks, we are going to see the Ukrainians attempt to cross the border and to attack the territory of Russian Federation of the mainland. And if we increase the number of updates that we have received uh, from Kupin's consumer front lines, we see that there are very fierce artillery and missile strikes from the Russian side and guided bombs as well. So so that means that there are very big accumulation of Ukrainian forces. Uh, when talking about the Ukrainians, they continue, of course, bomb and attack the Russian settlements and towns. But yet we have, I don't have at least some geolocated videos about those attacks, so I haven't added them as well. Now we are moving probably to another very interesting update to the territory of Belarus. The sources reported that Wagner's have created another camp on the south of Gumil. So around uh, 1,000 uh, soldiers have arrived in the vicinity of Gumil and start preparation of the camp. Uh, this camp is located in 20 kilometers to the border with Ukraine. So basically, according to information we have, Wagner's have uh, created at least three, four bases on the territory of Belarus. The first base was established in the vicinity in the central part of Belarus in Asipovich. There are airfield, there are ex-military base and probably this is the main um, logistics center of Wagner's. The second base was created in the vicinity of Brest when the Ukrainians, uh, when the Russians started trainings with probably 38th motorized mechanized brigade of Belarusian forces. The third base was created in the vicinity of Suwalki Gap. The, also the Wagner sent some infantry just to follow the situation and currently we got uh, the update about the th uh, third force bait so basically this is like three points of pressure and possible three options of ukraine of wagner's uh, special operation on the north of ukraine and in the vicinity of suwalki gap so basically wagner's have redeployed their forces as close as possible to possible areas of some intensifying of actions and these are the chernigov area and Sumer region these are uh, kovil area and the western part of ukraine and this is suwalki gap and uh, basically, that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.